Hey everybody, I'm back with yet another video. Um, this time it's on the Canberra slash NRC ADM 800, uh, or 300, sorry. Um, and I don't know why, I don't know if it's Canberra or NRC or both. If anyone happens to know that, would you mind commenting um, in the comment section, just letting me know? It's kind of an interesting, um, interesting thing. But anyway, so I got this on eBay for about 200 bucks. It's the Kit B, and it was formerly apparently owned by the United States Air Force. Um, but it's got a really nice hard shell case. Um, this unit here uh, is, the Kit B only comes with just the meter itself, basically um, a protective case um, for use while, you know, like I'm guessing in rain or something, and um, a uh, shoulder strap internally. There's also a pistol grip. Um, which has got like little a thumb wheel and uh, screw here. Um, when I first got this thing, that had never been used apparently. So there was a bunch of paint in the threads on the unit. So that was kind of a pain getting all that out and making it work. But eventually it did. Um, it's also got cables here for what are called smart probes. Or a cable for what are called small, smart probes. Um, those are the additional probes that would be included. Um, those probes, it's worth noting, are very interesting because unlike most Geiger counter probes where you can like snap on a BNC connector or something and the probe just works if you have your high voltage adjusted correctly, that's not the case with this. Um, these actually provide digital I.O. and voltage um, to the probes themselves, which are um, very interesting. They contain their own calibration information and their own high voltage power supply. So... Um, yeah, so like normal, you can't just get normal probes to work with this thing. Um, I'm pretty sure you could reverse engineer something and build them, build an assembly that would help you do that. But, uh, you know, as is, you can't really do that. Um, and then finally it contains, um, manuals and a bunch of Air Force calibration documents. I've got pretty much this thing's entire calibration history, but um, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and I'm going to extract some of these items and then start recording again. It's just much easier to do without the case on the table, so. Okay, here's the unit. Everything's extracted. Well, everything I wanted to kind of demo is extracted from the case. Um, here's the case itself and the strap. Um, strap can also fit here. And then here is the pistol grip. But anyway, so I'll cover the basics. Um, very simple, six... Um, key control panel, um, power light, audio, mode, set, and increment keys. Um, and this thing out of the box contains, um, the menu structure is very simple. Um, you've got a dose rate and an accumulated dose. Um, and then you can set both the dose rate and dose alarms. And there's also a survey mode, which um, kind of seems to work like a scaler, to where you can take like a long-term survey of a bunch of stuff and record the data. Um, like as an average, um, that can be either viewed on the unit or um, via the serial port on the back in the accessory cor um, port that I'll tell you about in a bit here. But anyway, so this side's pretty simple. Um, there's an X on the back marking where the center of both the high and low range tubes are. Um, the low range tube also doubles as a um, beta sensitive Geiger Mueller tube, whereas the high range is not. Um, and that basically ensures that the unit can operate in both low and high radiation fields. Um, it also takes two 9-volt batteries, which are installed here in kind of an interesting way. Um, and then I've labeled the probe and accessory ports, serial ports here, or well, ports. Um, this is the beta shield. It opens and closes just by pulling on it. Um, and the inside of there, it's protected by a window. Um, so it remains sealed even when the uh, shield is open. And yeah, the accessory port here provides um, serial data in and out at 300 baud. Um, it provides five volts out and a ground pin as well as nine volts in um, to power the unit from like, you know, maybe if it's vehicle mounted or hooked up to another piece of equipment somehow. And there's also um, an audio out so you can hook headphones up to it. Um, I've got a connector coming for this so I can kind of build a breakout and start interfacing it with a computer and headphones and stuff. But anyway, yeah, so it's kind of the exterior. So I'm going to go ahead and um, let's power it on here. And you get a please wait 
well it does this power on self check so here you can see the current dose rate and right now it's not showing anything um, and down here you can actually see count this is a counts per minute display in this with these tubes and it's actually in a logarithmic scale which is pretty interesting and you gotta kinda get you've got to kinda get used to it at first but uh, yeah it does eventually start making a lot of sense but anyway so we'll cycle through the modes here I'll turn the light on so you can see we'll cycle through the modes dose rate um, this asterisk means that audio is on um, with the asterisk gone the audio is off but if I hit audio again I'll also get the audible beeps for detection events so then we'll hit mode again so here we go, absorb dose, uh, seven micro runtions per hour. Um, I know that this either comes in or supports in the micro sievert scale or a sievert scale. Um, I don't know how to change that if I can uh, within the unit, but. So here we can set the dose rate alarm and the dose alarm itself. And then here's how we activate survey mode. I'm not actually gonna go through that. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. You take a survey, it goes for two minutes and averages all the counts and then uh, um, uh, just stores them. And you can store up to 100 surveys on this thing. Anyway, so we're back to dose rate. So now I'm gonna attach the pistol grip and measure a couple of samples. Okay, pistol grip attached. And I'm gonna go ahead and set this guy down and grab uh, a couple of samples here. So we'll start with some compression glass. Um, mild gammas, some alphas, but mostly soft betas. I've got a radium painted watch and a cesium-137 button sample that I'm gonna go ahead and extract now from the case. Yeah, that was not exactly graceful. Okay, so. First, we'll measure this guy with the beta window closed, and remember the probes on this side, so... A little bit of extra. So now we'll try the radium watch. This actually does a much better job of uh, measuring the radium watch when it's actually set on the bottom of the unit um, near the high and low range tubes. Um, but that's kind of hard to show with the camera and with one hand. So here's the cesium-137. Okay, now I'm going to pause and open the beta window so I can show you guys the alarms. Okay, and it's also worth noting um, that the beta shield is actually spring-loaded, so when you open it, it pops to the side of the unit, so it's not flapping all over the place, which is super nice. So this is the alarm, um, and it's actually a latching alarm, so even when you've left the radiation field, you need to press a button to clear it. So I'm just going to hit set. So... That's back down to kind of close to background levels. And this is beta plus gamma dose. And you can actually see that the counts per minute um, are yeah, working on that logarithmic scale. So there's actually not, in terms of distance, a whole lot of uh, change from, uh, from low level samples to higher level samples that I have. Um, but that's mostly just because uh, um, just because the scale is different, or is logarithmic, so you got to kind of watch out for that. It's not linear. But anyway, overall, it's a pretty good unit. It seems to be really sensitive. Um, on my MRAD 103, I get about, I don't know, usually um, 6 to like 13 micro ronchins an hour. Um, but with this thing, it'll actually, it actually seems to pick up a little bit closer to... Uh, 17 or 20 per hour at the high range. That's kind of cool. But anyway, yeah, solid instrument. Love it. And can't wait to use it a bit more and uh, interface it with a computer. Anyways, cheers.